So one of the things that we learn in thermochemistry is how to predict when a chemical reaction or even a physical reaction will be spontaneous or not. That's what this lesson is about. It's using the Gibbs free energy equation. So chemical spontaneity means that a, and this is a sort of a general definition that doesn't fit every case, okay, but it's kind of a good rule of thumb. Chemical spontaneity is a reaction, whether physical or chemical, a reaction that happens on its own without having to change the conditions to make it happen. Now we've talked about equilibrium and the Le Chatelier principle. And so that, go, that comes into this. So for example, if I want to make certain kinds of gases react together, they might not react by themselves without some kind of outside influence. But if I put them under pressure, I might make them happen. Does that make sense? All right. There are some things that uh, I might put in water it wouldn't dissolve unless I heated it up, okay? So that's changing the conditions. If we have to change the conditions to get it to happen, it's not considered spontaneous, all right? Now, there is a mathematical way of calculating spontaneity, but it requires that we learn uh, at least one new term and one new symbol, okay? Actually, two new terms, for sure. Uh, and this, and, and what we're going to talk about here is something called Gibbs... free energy. Now, free energy is how we determine spontaneity. If free energy, and most of the time when we talk about free energy, we're talking about the Gibbs equation, there are other free energy equations. So you need to know that this is not the only way of calculating spontaneity. But if you have a negative Gibbs free energy, the reaction is considered to be spontaneous. And if you have a positive change in Gibbs free energy, the reaction is considered to be not spontaneous. Okay? Negative Gibbs free energy, negative change in Gibbs free energy, spontaneous. Positive change in Gibbs free energy, not spontaneous. Got that? All right. Hope you wrote it down. Okay. Um... So Gibbs free energy is symbolized by G. Imagine that. And the change in Gibbs free energy, well, what's the symbol we use for change? Delta. There's our delta G. There's our change in Gibbs free energy. Okay? And so if this term is positive, the reaction is considered to be not spontaneous. If this term is calculated to be negative, the reaction is considered to be spontaneous. Okay, so this term then is the change in Gibbs free energy. And it's calculated like this. Delta H. Well, we know what delta H is. We've done that before. That's the store. H is the energy stored in the system. So the change, the delta means the change in the energy stored in the system. Okay, and we're going to subtract from that the absolute temperature times the change in another term called entropy. You may have heard that before. Change in entropy. Okay, so Gibbs free energy. Delta H is the change in stored energy. Change in, in uh, entropy. Stored energy minus absolute temperature, so it has to be on the Kelvin scale, times the change in entropy. Entropy, entropy. Entropy is a measurement we've talked about before of disorder. Entropy is a measurement of disorder. Okay? So some of you are really good at keeping your room neat. Right? I would suspect Madison's real good at keeping her room neat. Okay? No? Am I wrong? What? Are you not paying attention? Come on. Okay. All right. But I bet you've got to work at it. You have to kind of work at it to keep it neat, all right? Well, it takes work to keep things low in entropy, okay? You have to put work in there to make something have low entropy, all right? The universe is tending to be 
uh, high in entropy. The universe wants to be very disordered. Okay, and when you understand the whole process, that's not only evening out how things are arranged, it's evening out the energy too in the universe. So the energy in the universe wants to spread out, which we, we, we want that because we can't make ice cream without it. Okay? The fact is that the, the fact that the energy in our ice cream maker wants to even out on both sides of the equation, so to speak, that's, that's this term right here. Okay? We want to have the, this and this even out on both sides. Okay? That's, and the universe wants to do that, and that's the way we make ice cream and almost do almost everything else. It's why you're alive. Okay? Your body is a bunch of stored energy and organized stuff. And the way your body becomes, uses up that energy is to become less organized. Okay? It's part of the whole process for life on our planet. Okay? Now, you might not think about it that way, but that's what it comes down to. Okay? All right. So, we're not going to actually do a bunch of math with this. We're going to do this in a more general sense. Okay, I want you to think about this. Now, one thing that's helpful to understand is this entropy term is almost always, not always, but almost always smaller than this term. Okay, this is almost always a smaller term. S is always, almost always a smaller term than H. Well, actually, delta S and delta H. Okay? If we were to do the actual math, this term would be smaller most of the time than this. Okay? All right. So let's put let's make a kind of a chart here. Delta G and we're going to have delta H and T and delta S. Okay? Let's say that we have a positive delta H. Now what do we know about absolute temperature? Can it be ever negative? No. So it's always going to be positive, right? So let's say we have a positive delta S. Can we make a prediction about whether delta G is going to be positive or negative? It's all about whether this term is bigger than this combined term. Okay? It's all about whether this term is bigger than this combined term. Because if this, this term here, if the S is, the delta S is positive, T is always positive. Okay? So if this term, these combined terms here are larger than these ter this term here, this is going to be negative. Okay? So then... Assuming delta S is usually smaller than this term, in what case, then, would delta G be negative? What would make delta G negative if delta S is positive and delta H is positive? If T is large. So this is negative if T is large and positive if T is small. Does that make sense? Had to think about it a little bit, didn't you? Okay, we said temperature is always positive it has to be. Okay. What if delta H is a positive number? So the change in energy as the reaction progresses increases the amount of energy in the system and delta S is negative. So we're going to become more organized at the end than we were at the beginning. Okay. We're not increasing the amount of disorder. We're organizing it like um, Madison organizes a room. Okay. Then we're lowering the disorder, lowering the entropy term, okay? Can delta G ever be negative, and therefore can this reaction be, um, no, it can't, okay? Because if this is negative here, 
then if you consider this to be like a, a, neg one, a negative 1 times t, negative 1, a negative times a negative is always positive, right? So positive plus a positive, it never, it's always <coughs> positive. That makes sense? All right, then. How about if delta H is negative? So the energy in the system is reducing. We're dropping the energy in the system. That's what delta H is, the energy in the system. We're going to reduce the energy in the system. It's going to be negative, and delta S is going to be positive, and temperature is always positive. Hmm? Always negative. Never, it can never be positive. So if this term is positive, then a negative T because we're using a net, we're subtracting here, negative t times positive makes this term always negative, or this, if we include the negative over here, always negative. If this is always negative, this is, this is always negative. And therefore, the reaction is always spontaneous, under all conditions. Okay? No, I thought you were missing an S on the box back in that word. Uh, I thought you were saying that. No. No, if delta G is negative, the reaction is spontaneous. Okay? All right. Last thing we can we can play with here. Let's see, what haven't we done? Oh, both terms are negative, right? Negative and negative, and temperature is always positive. Okay? What Julia's on a roll here. I'm telling you. she got it. Okay? So this is, it's going to be, delta G is going to be negative if T is small. Okay? And positive if T is large. Is that what you said? Yeah. Good. I thought that's what you said. Okay. You're kind of quiet, so I want to make sure I heard it right. Okay. Usually quiet people are not very spontaneous. Side joke, but apparently nobody got it. Okay. Oh, you're not that quiet. Okay, just quiet in here. All right. I got it. All right. That makes sense. Okay. Let's see if we can figure out uh, some common things that happen and put it to use here. Okay. All right. Things that happen that we know happen in the wrong. So here's what I'd like to do. I'd like to have somebody give me some kind of common chemical or physical reaction. And let's see if we can figure out how it fits into all this. Okay? A common, something you're familiar with, chemical or physical reaction. Huh? Rust, Rust he says. Okay. Let's look at that. Rusting. Rusting occurs when we have iron, and iron is in the physical state of a solid. And it combines with oxygen, which is in a physical state of a gas. Good. And rust, the most common kind of rust you guys have seen, wouldn't really matter here, but is Fe2O3. And that's a solid. Okay? So let's see. We've got three terms. We've got delta H. Go back, we'll do it up here like this. We've got delta H and T and delta S. All right? So is the delta H term going to be positive or negative. Now, you wouldn't know this, okay? But I want to tell you that when things rust, they give away energy. And what does that do to delta H? In other words, it feels warm on the outside. In fact, if you go to a hardware store and buy one of those chemical hand warmers, okay, they're running based this kind of reaction here, and it gives away heat. It's just set up so it gives away a lot of heat, right? So what's happening to delta H? if it's feeling warm to us? 
Huh? Is it losing well, we're not talking about electrons here. We're talking about heat. Heat energy is what we're talking about. And so what is happening to delta H? What is delta H? What is H? Energy stored in the system. So this is changing and becoming negative. Why? It's giving it away. So this term is negative. Okay? What about delta S? Does this look like we're becoming more ordered and have a positive S? I'm sorry. This, this is a measure of disorder. If it's becoming more ordered, this is negative. If it's becoming less ordered, this is positive. Is this becoming disordered or ordered? Now think about the structural particles that make these things up. This is a, these are made of individual atoms, the structure, and we do in unit 7, we talk about structural particles. And we said that metals, uh, we call it the C, the electron C model, and we call it, and so we said the structural particles of a metal are kind of like atoms and kind of like ions, and they're stuck together by that flow of electrons or sea of electrons around it. These are individual uh, oxygen molecules that are just spread out all over. So those structural particles aren't even attached. Not a lot of structure there. And we're putting them together like this. So overall, take all this together and all this together. Are we becoming more ordered or less ordered as we go from reactants to products? More ordered, he says. Anybody agree with that? Oh, you seem to be... Oh, you agree. I saw one more person shaking their head. Okay, no, everybody else disagrees. Mm -hmm. You disagree? No, I agree. Oh, you agree. Okay, if you agree, raise your hand. Let me know. Uh, I've still got most people disagreeing with you, apparently. Or, I mean, there's a lot of people don't care or don't know. <laughs> you have the deal? What about it, Colin? <laughs> don't care. <laughs> He's a senior. He's about to graduate. He don't care. Okay. No, I'm kidding. He obviously cares about his grades. All right. All right. So Andrew says this is becoming more ordered. Now, what's your justification for that claim? Two things well, that's one way to think about it. Two things become one thing. That's more ordered. Another thing is this is highly disordered because gases, the particles aren't even st stuck together. Okay, this is like hundreds of thousands and millions of these things all separated. Okay, and this is like one, one particle with some structure. But we get some structure, unstructured, and so a structure that's probably less structured than this, because, you know, rust is kind of flaky, right? All right? Kind of flaky, right? Yep. Kind of like Julia. Kind of flaky. No, I'm, I'm not admitting that. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Just, 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 just the name. Just the Okay. We know she's not. That's why I can say that. You know, we know she's not. All right. Oh, really? You don't know what flaky means? Oh, man. No. Uh, you know what an airhead is? Okay, an airhead is flaky. All right. You don't know what an airhead is? I mean, we're not talking about a candy. A person that's an airhead? Okay. The stereotypical blonde. Does that make sense? Not an actual blonde, but a stereotypical blonde. Y'all y'all still don't get it? No, I said not an actual blonde. I was clear. I did not mean you. Oh no, I'm not I'm just saying stereotypical. You know what the stereotypical stereotypical blonde is. Come on. I'm not looking at you. I didn't look at you. I looked at everybody else before you. What is the deal? Okay? I'm looking at Shay, okay? I don't know. All right. All right. Let's get back to this. Let's get back to this. Come on. Focus here. Put away the cell phones. I urban dictionary. Oh, you did? I did. Yeah. Okay. What do you get? Do you really want to hear it? Well, I guess. Mr. Ketter is wrong. Okay. All right. What does it? What does the urban dictionary say? Flecky is. It says an unreliable person, a procrastinator, careless or lazy person, dishonest and doesn't keep to their word. They'll tell you they're going to do one thing and never do it. They'll tell you they'll meet you somewhere and show up an hour late. Okay. Sounds like who? Oh, don't say who. Don't say who. Okay. All right. I don't even want to know. Okay. I hope they didn't come through on the... I don't even know who this... You didn't say last name. I guess it's okay. Probably plenty of people with that name. All right. So, 
this is becoming this is becoming more organized. So what is the delta S term? Not positive or negative? Negative. Negative because less disordered means more ordered. Okay. So let's look at our chart up here. Negative and negative, always spontaneous. That makes sense. So this is good. The delta G here is negative. Hmm? Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, that's right. Ah, here we go. This is it. I didn't get it far enough down. All right. So it's negative if T is small and positive if T is large. So if we have a high temperature then, this is not spontaneous. Okay? This is high temperature. This is not spontaneous. Negative if T is small. Well, what does that tell us about rust? Okay. Can we can we break this apart? Yeah. Can we put it make go back to these two things? How do we do that? Maybe in some lab. Heat it up. That's what they do when they make when they smelt iron. They heat it up. It breaks it apart. Wait a minute. No, no. So you mean if you like heat metal, rust will go away. The rust will break apart, and will cut. You get the pure iron and oxygen. Now, it's dangerous because the oxygen is so flammable. It'll, you know, well, what you do is you put, car you put carbon in there to get it to make CO2, and so it's more stable, it's easier to work with, safer, okay? Okay, so in claim and justification form, you want to explain if or when, if it's necessary, water will freeze. And you have to explain how to use the Gibbs equation to determine your answer adequately to justify the answer. So Gibbs has to be part of your justification. All of this up here has to be part of your justification. 